My name is Daniel Miranda. I am the coordinator of this session about the student result and their characteristics in the, the research nine session uh, in the Impasse conference. Uh, I will just uh, uh, put some rules about the presentation and about the, the, how the session will work. We, we, we will have five presentations. Uh, the first one is the ability composition in the class and the school performance of immigrant students presented by Cardinal Pavese and Elena Meski. The second presentation will be territories and educational poverty differences and characteristics in the Italian provinces presented, presented by Barbara Baldassi. The third one will be the influence of socioeconomic cultural background on academic results in the universities of Italian language and mathematics in two southern re regions, Puglia and, uh, and Abruzzo by Sergio Di Sano and Caterina Valenzano. The fourth one will be the roots of educational inequality in Italy, a machine learning approach to analyze the geographical difference in role of student social background. And the last one will be wet or hurry, the effect of early school enrollment on school outcomes of Italian students, presented by Giovanni Abiati. Okay, just for, for uh, the rules of presentation, we, each presenter or speaker will have 20 minutes. Please keep around 20 minutes in order to have an, two or three questions after each presentation and in order to respect the time of other presenters in here. Okay. Okay, we will start with the first presentation the ability of composition in the class. Uh, and the school performance of immigrant students presented by Katrina Pavese, who is a researcher in the, in the CA for Sachi for Scari University of Venice. Her research interests focus on economic education, applied macroeconomics, macro econometrics, and labor economics. And the second author is Elena Meski, is associate professor in the, in the Department of Economics uh, in University of Milano Bicocca and research fellow in the CIFES. Her main research interests are in labor, economics, education, and trade and applied econometrics. Uh, thank you, Katerina and Elena, for your presentation. Just you can share your 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 thank slides you. and start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Katerina Favese, and I'm going to uh, present a joint work with Elena Meski concerning ability composition in the class and the school performance of uh, immigrant children. Uh, the motivation for this paper uh, is uh, the fact that over the last decade, there has been a rapid growth of immigrants in most OECD countries that has um, uh, led to investigate in many directions, ranging from the uh, impact on labor market outcomes to uh, the impact on educational systems that were indeed uh, usually uh, affect. Uh, given this, many, many researchers have investigated the impact of immigrant students on native students' outcomes. Uh, this was due to the fact that uh, there was uh, the concern that immigrant students might be uh, detrimental to uh, native students because on average they come from a lower socioeconomic background, learn in a new language, face some familiar institution, and so they exhibit a huge, um, a huge gap uh, in performances. We want to uh, challenge the existing approach by looking at what is good uh, for immigrants. Uh, in particular, in this paper that is a peer fed paper, uh, we want to investigate the impact of the class composition on uh, immigrant students' educational outcomes. Uh, this uh, topic is really important because it would allow to design policies and implement policies uh, for class composition uh, and understand how and whether to foster the learning and integration of uh, immigrant students. Uh, uh, to be more specific, we are going to study the impact of ability class composition, so the impact of both uh, native and immigrant peers on immigrant children in Italian lower secondary school. And we're going to use two um, uh, 
uh, cohorts of, of students that take the Invalsi test at the end of uh, uh, eighth grade uh, in 2016 and 2017. Um, we are interested not only in understanding the role of the average ability of peers on immigrant students' uh, uh, test scores, but we want to look also at the impact of uh, the extreme tail of the distribution. So whether uh, very good or very bad peers play a role in explaining uh, the effect on uh, immigrant student test scores. Uh, the contribution of our paper is, first of all, the focus on immigrant children that, as I said, uh, we should not take for granted, unfortunately. Moreover, we use a neat identification strategy that solves two of the uh, most crucial problems in peer effect literature, so the endogenous selection of, of pupil and the uh, reflection problem. Uh, and thanks to Invalsi, we are going to use very detailed and rich administrative data uh, that uh, allow uh, us to follow students over time. So we use longitudinal data and we are able in this way to build measure of peer ability that are uh, predetermined with respect to the outcome that we look at. Moreover, we have class uh, identifier. And this is very important because we are able to identify peer group at a very granular level. That is something that is not very common uh, in the literature that, um, com that commonly to us try to address uh, the, uh, the challenges of uh, peer effect identification, but they often, uh, are in, for this reason, attenuate also the uh, effect uh, observed. Uh, I go fast on this, but our institutional framework is, of course, uh, Italy, where the schooling system is mainly public and the tracking by ability of students is not uh, allowed. Uh, between primary and lower secondary school, we are going to exploit this. Students uh, change school. There is a um, compulsory transition uh, where there is a substantial reshuffling uh, of peers. Lower secondary school lasts uh, for three years, and the school board is in charge of uh, the formation of classes that should be formed uh, following a uh, principle of equity in terms of social economic background, uh, gender, and so on and so forth. Uh, importantly for us, students stay with the same peers throughout the uh, period of the lower secondary school. Uh, so, as I said, in this paper, we, we use Imbalzi data, we use, uh, we exploit two cohorts uh, of students and we have longitudinal data. So we observe students both in fifth and in eighth grade. Moreover, we have uh, many uh, characteristics that we can uh, add to enrich uh, our uh, our analysis, we have detail of families and students' background characteristics, students' class uh, and uh, school identifiers and uh, characteristics. So, as I said, we face uh, many uh, challenges for uh, the identification of peer effects that are common to this, uh, to this literature. First of all, peer might simultaneously affect each other, the so-called reflection problem by the uh, seminal paper of Mansky. In order to address this problem, we define peer ability in a predetermined way, so that is not simultaneously determined with uh, eighth grade student test score, so it, it is defined in fifth grade. Uh, moreover, given that we can track students in this transition between primary and lower secondary school, we are able to single out new peers from old peers and we can construct measures separately for these two groups, as, uh, as done by Gibbons and co-authors and uh, Lavi et al. 2012. The other um, challenge that we face is that students might sort into a specific group, particularly, uh, for instance, ability, uh, students on ability might correlate with students uh, with peer uh, ability, uh, with uh, students' peer ability. 
Uh, so in order to address this problem, we use within pupil uh, regression so that we exploit the variation in pupil outcomes across two compulsory subjects, reading and math. Um, and, uh, we, um, uh, and we study whether the subject to subject variation in the outcomes in eighth grade for the same student is associated with the subject to subject variation of uh, peer ability. So this is our uh, estimating equation where the, uh, where the dependent variable is student's eighth grade test scores and our uh, coefficient of interest are PCC that captures the average ability in fifth grade uh, defined uh, on the ability distribution uh, defined at the national level. Um, and the other two important um, coefficient of interest are delta two and delta three that capture the fraction of very high and low ability peers in student or class. We define low and high ability peers as the five per top and bottom percent of the ability distribution. Uh, we also include, uh, as I said, student fixed effect, but also another uh, other um, fixed effects such as such as subject specific fixed effect, subject by cohort fixed effect, and gender by subject uh, fixed effect. Um, in this. Uh, in this graph, I just want to uh, provide you compelling evidence uh, of the uh, performance gaps between native and immigrant children, both uh, in fifth grade uh, in the uh, left hand side panel and in eighth grade in the mm, right hand side uh, panel. Um, as I said, identification for us uh, is, is given by the variation within a uh, score uh, within student across a uh, subject. Uh, so uh, in, in, this, in this table, I show you mean and standard, uh, standard deviation, um, standard deviation decomposed by decomposing between and within uh, student variation. And although the lion's share of variation is explained by between student variation, we see that we have also uh, substantial within student variation. So what we are saying is that we have the variation to identify so that uh, within student, uh, the test scores are, are not perfectly correlated and there is room for identifying uh, the effect of, of interest. Uh, I'm now going to show you uh, our results and uh, for each table, I'm going to show you three different specification where I first include uh, the average ability only, then the fraction of top and bottom peers only, and then I include all these uh, so-called treatments uh, together. So this is our this is first table of result, and I also show you OLS uh, uh, regressions uh, as a, for the sake of uh, comparison. And what we see is that the mean score of uh, of uh, the average ability so of, of peers uh, is uh, positively correlated with test scores uh, of students in eighth grade. And this is true both for native and immigrants. Uh, we also see that when analyzed separately, uh, we see that the fraction of top peers has a positive impact while the fraction of bottom peers as, a, as expected as a negative one. And this is true both for natives and immigrants, uh, panel A and panel B. Uh, interestingly, when we turn to pupil fixed effect regression, so column two, fourth, and sixth, what we see is that the magnitude of our coefficient uh, dramatically reduced. And this is due, due to the fact that we are able, as I said, to control for uh, endogenous sorting. So unobserved uh, time invariant characteristics, uh, spillovers across subjects and sorting across um, uh, school and classes. Uh, focus our attention on interpretation of these uh, results, what we see is that uh, when analyzed separately, the average ability has a positive and significant impact, while the fraction of top 
uh, peers has a positive and significant impact, while the fraction of bottom peers has a negative one. But when we turn to regression, where, where we include all these treatments together, we see that the average ability of peers absorb uh, most uh, of the effect. We investigated many uh, heterogeneities, so by gender, parents, educational level, immigrant student generational background, and all these results point uh, in the same uh, direction. What is interesting is that for immigrant students, we find that uh, the negative impact of bottom peers uh, is particularly strong for low uh, educated for children with low educated parents that we use as a proxy for uh, economic uh, socioeconomic background. At this point, we uh, we we thought that there were valid reason. Uh, to build uh, separate um, peer policy measures separately for immigrant and native students. First of all, the, in the national distribution, there could be an underrepresentation of immigrant students in the fraction of top peers and an overrepresentation uh, in the fraction of bottom peers. Moreover, immigrants and native students could have different reference groups. So, uh, um, put different weights on different uh, on different peers and they can also affect differently native and immigrant children as described uh, previously uh, in the literature. For this reason I'm going to um, to show you results where I use a separate uh, measure for peer policy and also uh, the results uh, for using the same ability distribution or separate ability distribution for native and uh, immigrant students. So in panel A, you see separate ability distributions for native and immigrant children. And in panel B, are the using a common ability distribution, while peer measures are built uh, separately for these two groups. Uh, what is really interesting from this table is the following, uh, in our view. First of all, we see that native students are mostly affected, are, are to be honest, only affected by the ability of native students. Immigrant students do not play a role in, in they do not affect their test scores. And this is really important with respect the, to the existing literature. Uh, on the other hand, uh, immigrant students are affected by the average ability of uh, native, uh, native students. Uh, the signs are in line uh, and the magnitudes are in line with results uh, that I um, presented previously. And uh, results are uh, robust, are consistent using both a separate ability distributions or a common ability uh, distribution. I now want to show you last piece of evidence uh, that we are going to investigate more because we think it's really interesting. And this is the heterogeneity by parents educational level. Uh, given the fact that we can uh, uh, observe a measure uh, separately for immigrants and native uh, students, we are able to disentangle uh, effects uh, with respect to heterogeneity done on the entire uh, sample using same uh, ability measure. And what we see, uh, the most interesting part in my view, is that is the one concerning low education uh, immigrant children coming from um, having uh, parents, low educated parents. What we see is that for them, Sorry, I'm not able, okay. I hope that you see uh, that what we see is that for them, we observe a negative impact of the fraction of, bot, uh, of, the fraction of uh, bottom peers, uh, uh, Im immigrants' bottom peers. While we do not observe any impact of, of natives on, on their educational achievements. And also when we consider all these treatments together, what we see is that for them, um, the average ability that matters is the one of immigrant children. This is not the same for immigrant children 
coming with uh, high educated parents that are, are mostly affected by, uh, sorry, by the fraction of uh, bottom peers that are uh, natives. Uh, in our view, this suggests that uh, the, the greater is the distance uh, in terms of socioeconomic background uh, between native and immigrant children, the lower is the uh, impact of native children on uh, immigrant children. It's kind of a nomophily uh, process, uh, I, I would say. So uh, peers that share um, the same characteristics are more uh, affected by, by each other. Okay, uh, sorry, I don't know why. Okay, so um, just to conclude, uh, in, this, uh, in this preliminary work, we shed light on the distant contribution of two groups on the effect um, on the effect previously discussed uh, using the same uh, ability, ability measures. And what, what is really interesting is that for native, stu native students are not affected by immigrant students' ability. And that uh, our pupil fixed effect estimates show that native peers average ability as a positive and significant effect of, on both native and immigrant students. And moreover, we find uh, preliminary evidence that there is a homophily type of mechanism uh, explaining our results so that effects are stronger within the same group rather than across groups. And this is in line with, uh, for instance, the literature investigating uh, racial uh, peer effects. Uh, so just to conclude, uh, um, Using a convincing and neat identification strategy, we show that average quality of peer matters, and this is really important with, with respect to what uh, we, we know so far uh, in the literature, and uh, peer effects are stronger among uh, uh, group, uh, among students belonging to the same group and uh, importantly native students are not affected by immigrant students ability uh, so uh, overall what we, what we claim is that uh, in uh, from a policy perspective we should uh, we should invest more in class uh, composition because uh, is a is a policy that could help uh, to foster immigrant children learning and so um, also uh, their uh, integration into the educational uh, system. Thanks for, for the attention. Thank you for the presentation, uh, Katrina. There is some questions uh, or comments yeah. about the presentation. We have time for one or two questions, please. Just yeah, open the, the micro. Question of comments? There is someone there? Uh, yeah. I, uh, can, oh, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, are there the territorial differences in north and south uh, or so on? Um, yeah, we, um, uh, we find that uh, effects are stronger in the north but we want to investigate more in this uh, to be honest uh, of course this is due also to the fact that uh, immigrants are more uh, concentrated in the north but but results are consistent uh, uh, both uh, in the north and and in the south although stronger in the north Uh, may I, Daniel? Yeah, sure. Yeah, please. Please. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, th thank you for the presentation. Um, Katrina, it was unclear to me, how do you solve the Mansky's reflection effect? It was, uh, uh, I didn't yeah. uh, understand it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, so what we did, we used uh, we, we observe students both in fifth and in eighth grade, and we build peer measure in fifth grade. Okay, so so all, all the all the measure 
peer ability measures are predetermined, are defined in fifth grade. Okay. And uh, just, I don't know if there is nobody else. I have a second one, but I asked the coordinator to allow me or not. Yeah, but if someone have another question, if, if no, maybe in your case, just a follow up uh, of uh, uh, please, Maurice comment. Thank you. No, I understood now your strategy, but uh, did you check whether the composition of the fifth grade classroom is correlated to the composition of the eighth classroom? Because maybe the composition of the eighth classroom is endogenous to the fifth. And so, okay. If that, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, maybe I, I didn't stress it enough, but we, you, we are able to separate new and old peers. Okay, so new and old peers are those that, old peers are those, are those that were in the same class as the student in eighth grade, while new peers, they, they were not in the same class in the fifth grade. So the coefficient that I showed you are, are just for new peers. Okay, and uh, well, my question is exactly about the follow-up of Maurice on my, <laughs> on his follow-up on mine. So uh, my curiosity is you said that there is a consistent reshuffling uh, from the primary to secondary school. Uh, and I'm interested in, if you can provide the measure of that, because as far as I know, now most uh, primary schools are nested into what they're called istituti comprensivi, that are the same institute having the same principle for uh, the primary and the lower secondary school. So maybe what uh, in my uh, well, anecdotal uh, evidence and uh, talking with teachers, uh, uh, what happens is that uh, the, the people stays more or less in the same area and the catch up of the school is the same. So what they do, they stay into the same school that you identify with Codice Scuola, which is the same. What they do is that maybe they change the classroom. And uh, it's true that you, uh, as you said, they should be built on a principle of equity, but it's not what is observing the data and uh, also many uh, secondary schools uh, have various, uh, have a different educational offer like second language, a, a second foreign language, French or Spanish or German or Latin uh, improvement uh, tracks and so on and so forth. So what you see is that there is, this just, ju ju justifies somehow a uh, higher segregation within the school in lower secondary school. Maybe that's linked with also with uh, ability because uh, the teachers of the, the, there is in many schools, teachers of the fifth grade talk with the teachers of, of, the, of the sixth grade. And this is, the, 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 this is it. I don't know how this may impact your strategy, but I was interested in, in, in the numbers if you have some, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Okay, no, we have a, a huge reshuffling in the sense that it should be around 70%. So people that change peers uh, and have new peers in their, in their uh, lowest secondary school class. So, um, so what, you, what you mean is, so I think this answer the, your concern about the fact that you have, in a certain way you select uh, your peers, because this should not be kind of possible. And uh, our identification should take in, takes into account selection into school and classes. So okay. given that we have within pupil fixed effect, you should, you should not concern about the fact that you are in the same school as before. Okay, thank you for your introduction. And, and also, sorry, just, just last, last thing, also yeah, please, sele please. selection should, should go uh, with, uh, with subjects because we exploit variation across subject. So you should select your peers with respect to the subject that is kind of, I don't know, it's weird to me to think about this, but. 
thank you. If you see the yeah. point. Okay. okay. Thank but thank you. you for the question. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you, Katrina, for your presentation. Now thank we will you, have thanks. the second presentation. Territories and educational poverty, differences and characteristics in the Italian provinces uh, by Barbara Baldassi. Barbara is a researcher of socioeconomic demographic statistics area in the ISTAT since 19, 1997, researching the SDG project, Sustainable Development Goals, United Nations Statistics Division, uh, instructed with uh, the task coordination, the production indicator for measuring sustainable development and monitoring its objectives. Thank you, Barbara. Can you share your presentation? And... Okay. Yes, um, I apologize for my English, <laughs> sorry, but uh, uh, it's my problem. Uh, okay, good afternoon. I presented this uh, uh, work on territories and educational poverty, uh, difference and characteristics, characteristic and new challenges. Um, um, my paper draws on the OECD approach uh, in the book uh, For Good Measure Advancing Research uh, on Wellbeing uh, Metrics uh, Behind uh, GDP. Uh, in this book, two types of uh, inequality are distinguished. Uh, the ex post inequality, which looks at uh, differences uh, in individual outcomes, such as uh, um, economic well-being, standard of living, earnings, income, and also education. And the ex ante inequality, which looks at uh, how different uh, the circumstances uh, unintentionally inherited or faced by the individuals are uh, that affect their outcomes. Uh, we can see that uh, we can say that the ex post uh, view is referred as uh, inequality of outcome, and the ex ante view is referred to as inequality of opportunity. Uh, both type of inequality are uh, clearly linked. Um, in fact, an increase in ex ante inequality will uh, increase ex post inequality and in the same way inequality of outcomes at a point, uh, a point of time or within a generation may aff affect inequality of opportunity in the future or in the next uh, generation. Uh, when we talk about inequality of opportunity, we talk about uh, educational poverty. Uh, in fact, every child and young person has the right to learn, train, uh, develop these skills, competence and aspiration in the most profitable possible way uh, with the best opportunities. Uh, when this right is not guaranteed, uh, the child finds himself in a condition of educational poverty, uh, suffer so for inequality of opportunity, uh, which strongly and negatively affects his growth. Uh, for this, the inequality of opportunities becomes very important to understand because it affects in negative way children's uh, learning. Um, I have two uh, research questions. Um, the first, uh, um, the, I can say that the educational disadvantage of children and pe young people is often influenced by socioeconomic family situation, material factor, like also the region of residence, inequality of opportunity, and so on. And the first question is, what are the main variables that influence, uh, influence the uh, inadequate skills of student? And I talk about gender, uh, nationality, socioeconomic, uh, cultural status of the family with the index, uh, impulse index on economic, social, uh, cultural uh, status, and also geographical uh, areas. Uh, but now, in this very particular period, uh, we have to look for other variables that can display uh, the inadequate um, um, competences. In fact, in the 2020, the pandemic has brought a change in the forms of teaching and in the form of doing school. Um, there are still few data on this uh, to understand uh, what's happening, what's happening for the student society or for the student skills. Uh, but we can say that in the second question, uh, what can we as, um, expect? Uh, now there is no answer uh, for Italy. Uh, we can only begin to understand uh, what's that happening by asking what is the starting condition of Italian students in this uh, um, pandemic year. And uh, I uh, use the data uh, from the students of uh, grade 10 in uh, uh, 20. 
2018-29 year of school. Um, for example, for the ined inadequate competence in reading literacies um, are more numerous among the males, 39.1%, among those living in the South and Island, 41.9%, uh, among the first generation foreigners, 54.2% uh, uh, among students ac attending vocational or professional uh, institute, 66.7%, uh, and among those living in lower socioeconomic and cultural levels, families, 46.5%. Um, uh, for the student of grade, D, uh, grade 10, um, the percentages track the same categories, but are much higher. Uh, insufficient competence in mathematics for 53.5% of those living in the south and uh, Italy in the Island, Island uh, 53.6% of the first generation for seniors, 73.4% for those attending vocational or, and professional institutes, and 51.7% uh, for students living in a families with a low socioeconomic and cultural levels. The only exception is the higher proportion of girls with inadequate skills compared to boys. In fact, we have 42.2% for girls versus 33.5% for boys. And uh, on geographical area, territorial level, students living in the South and Island have perform worse. And have a look at the map of the Italian provinces, it can be observed that competence in uh, reading or Italian are better than competence in mathematics because in um, um, the maps of mathematics, uh, the provinces are in red, uh, uh, dark red. Um, Okay, now um, um, it's interesting to analyze uh, how the variable may protective uh, with uh, the respect to risk of not reaching an, uh, um, an adequate level of competence in uh, reading game and numeracy. In fact, we have the structural variables like gender, nationality, uh, geographical areas, uh, and, and uh, um, social, economic, and uh, cultural status, but uh, it's also important to analyze other variables, um, especially at this present time. And I talk about the number of books at home, uh, 0 to 25, uh, 26, uh, 26 to 100, and more than 100. Uh, the presence of internet connection and a personal uh, computer uh, I do a single variable uh, called DAD with the values yes or no. Um, the attending uh, at the pre-primary school, yes or no. The language spoken at home, Italian or other uh, type of language. And the mother occupational status, employed or housewife. Uh, at the first step, uh, the analysis was carried out by a uh, means of a logistic regression model that uh, take in account uh, the variables uh, uh, previously uh, illustrated. And uh, the dependent variable is the achievement of a sufficient level in both skills, level three, four, and five in maths, and level three, four, five in reading. And it is worth one if the student reaches sufficient level in mathematics and in reading, vice versa is worth uh, zero, is a dummy uh, zero one. Um, in the second step, um, I assessed the which interaction between the variables. Um, we uh, examined the interaction between the variables and the variable uh, dad. Two by uh, two. To, um, I show the result with the oration because I think uh, is uh, more friendly to understand uh, because the oration represents the ratio between the hots of uh, does exposed to a given risk factor and does in the target uh, category. Uh, in the study, in this study, the hosts are given by the probability 
of having a least sufficient competence in mathematics and Italian in relation to its complementary probability. Uh, in other words, the ratio measures the association between the response variable and the covariate under examination. It is one in the absence of the association. It is greater than one when the probability of having uh, at least sufficient competence increase in the presence of the risk factor. It is less uh, than one when it decreases. Uh, the significant probabilities are in the dark blue. And the orange line uh, represents the absence of association, the point uh, one. Uh, in this uh, graph, uh, the probability of having a uh, less sufficient skills in, um, is uh, significantly higher for those living in the north than for those living in the south Ed uh, island, three times more likely. Um, students who are regular in their studies in the school uh, path are about three times more li likely to have a sufficient skill than uh, those who have failed. Um, there is a slightly higher probability for boys than for girls. And finally, first generation natives are more disadvantaged, also uh, referred to the second generation foreign, not, solo, not only for nat uh, from native. For other, other variable, uh, uh, as the socioeconomic and uh, cultural level of family increase, the probability of having good skills in mathematics and Italian increase. Um, so, uh, as the number of books increase, uh, so uh, the probability of having good skill increase, and. Uh, um, the connection between the mother employment status and the skill is less important but significant. Also, the attendance at the pre-primary pre school. And the, the, uh, on the other hand, the probability of having better skill in Christ uh, by more than 50% uh, if student has a, a personal computer and an internet connection. And if students speak Italian, with family members. For the second step, the interaction between the variables that show the greatest significance is that between the socioeconomic and cultural level of the family and the possession of the personal computer and the internet connection. And the really important result is that among students with a low socioeconomic and cultural level, having a, a personal computer and an internet connection increase the probability of, of having uh, good skills, uh, more than for the student belonging to families with either higher social, economic and cultural levels. Uh, summarizing, a good presence of book in the home uh, is associated with a probability of uh, uh, achieving sufficient competence uh, twice as I. Uh, there is a protective effect of pre-primary school uh, attendance. This effect is weaker, but uh, still significant. Uh, speaking with family in Italia, in Italian facilitates the proficiency. Uh, having a, a personal computer and an internet connection help, helps in the development of uh, competences. Among children who come from disadvantaged families, uh, the first quartile of uh, uh, in the in the in Balsi index on uh, economic, social, uh, socioeconomic, uh, cultural status, is interesting to note that being able to use a PC and an internet connection increases the probability of having adequate uh, skills. Um, in the light of what happened in um, to 2020 and also in 2021, the result uh, presented is uh, important. In fact, in uh, 2020, uh, the, there was uh, one of the most profound standard transformation moving from a total in-person teaching to a distance teaching or a distance learning, online teaching and so on. 
uh, for many months uh, in 2020 and also in 2021. Um, for this, uh, it becomes even more important to have a good, uh, good internet connection uh, and a personal computer or an electronic device to be able to interact with the school and with teacher. Um, in the National Statistical Institute, we, have, uh, we do a survey every year. Uh, on school, uh, we collected uh, information on the integration of students with disabilities in schools. And uh, in this uh, in 2020, uh, we, we showed that uh, educational institutions have equipped themselves in various forms of distance learning. But uh, um, despite the effort of the institution, teachers and family, 80% of children and youth in, school, in schools of uh, whole level remain completely excluded from any form of distance learning. And uh, between uh, uh, students with disabilities, uh, this percentage uh, is uh, 23%. Um, between the 8% of children who are completely excluded from distance learning and thus who are included in distance learning so with the lesson and so on, there is a great variability of situation, no? video lesson, or only on work, uh, chat messages, and so on. And another important um, result of this survey is that the, the timing of school adoption of, of distance learning also varied widely. And some schools started only after six weeks, uh, practically started with uh, distance learning in May, uh, only for one month of uh, school, uh, of your school. And um, to... Uh, I am there for the conclusion is a very particular phase of learning at uh, the connection and uh, internet connection and personal computer beside being a fundamental predictor factor for uh, uh, adequate development skills it becomes a requirement for access to education. And uh, the impact of distance learning uh, school closure has affected a population of students already affected by profound uh, inequalities of opportunity. And uh, um, despite national and local policies, the effort of educational institutions, teachers and families, the effect on skills and school dropout, especially in the most vulnerable segment of the population could be particularly serious. Um, Thank you for your attention. Sorry. Thank you, Barbara, for your presentation. Okay, it's the same, the same the dynamic is someone have a question or comment. We have time for two or three questions. Please. May, <coughs> may I ask something? Yes, please, Paolo. So um, thanks for the presentation. Um, I would like to ask you about um, the use of the aggregate uh, in indicator of socioeconomic uh, background. So wh why, um, given the sample size that you have, uh, why don't you uh, try to uh, unpack that index using directly the information uh, that are available in the, in the in the in the data, because I think for the specific uh, focus you have, it may be the case that uh, you may learn something uh, new about uh, what specific uh, aspect of socioeconomic ground uh, yes. does affect your, uh, your 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 probability of being below a certain uh, threshold. Yes, I try. Uh, in fact, I use also the educational uh, attainment of uh, um, parents uh, and, the, uh, uh, and the occupational employment status of parents. But uh, we use uh, so, um, we use in ISTAT in uh, National Institute of Statistics another type of. Uh, a classification of uh, um, employment status. And uh, the um, employment status used by Invalsi is uh, so uh, different. Uh, and uh, um, 
Patricia told me that uh, they uh, um, uh, focus on the um, earnings of the uh, employee status and not or the uh, employee status like in is that is uh, with the isco classification of uh, um, isco classification is a uh, uh, international classification of uh, professional uh, um, of a profession um, and they try uh, yes uh, also the number of books uh, is a uh, part of uh, the um, uh, socioeconomic index and uh, I use uh, uh, um, separately and uh, also the employment of uh, uh, mother. Uh, yes, I, I can. Uh, it's, it's... No, no, that was uh, exactly my question. So the fact that you use it uh, both in the aggregate index and then uh, separately may, may create uh, some problem in your ability to interpret what you get. So you could get rid of the aggregation uh, and uh, directly use all the information you, you, you want to use. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Please, please, any other question or comment? No? Yeah, I, I, I have a, a question or, or maybe an, an, an reflection about, about the, the model because, uh, yeah, a part of, of the, this type of this maybe problem of modeling, including this socioeconomic index and books at home in the same model, but uh, I saw this impact of the book, books at home in, in, in other studies in other countries. Typically, this variable have a lot of relation with educational outcomes. And, and, I, and I was thinking about the relation of this with reading skills and, and the, the reading skill as a proxy of uh, this observer variable uh, that we have in, in typically when, when we try to modeling a, a achievement is kind of intelligence or a measure that uh, have this basic skill and this individual characteristic of the students uh, to interpret reading fast the questions the questionnaires and and finishing the question the questioners and that is related with the with the with the shipment that the students have maybe maybe just for modeling in order to clean the impact of the socioeconomic uh, characteristics mm -hmm. maybe use the reading skill as a control in order to for example modeling the the math probability to have a lower or higher uh, skills because yeah because of that because all time we we don't have the observation of uh, this individual difference. We don't have a measure in, in typically in the, in the educational uh, uh, evaluations. Uh, we don't have a measure of, of uh, individual difference uh, about intelligence, for example, or about more basic skills. Maybe maybe an option is try to include in the model as a control one previous measure of the same measure of math, for example, math achievement. If you have in the in the in the database. Or using a proxy, a proxy and second measure, in this case, reading skills. Maybe that could help in order to clean the, this huge impact of socioeconomic issues. And maybe that kind of uh, uh, effects will be moderated by the skills that the students have. That, yeah, that's, okay, that okay. is just a reflection of that. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay. If we don't have any other question, we will have the third presentation. Thank you, Barbara, for your presentation. And the third presentation will be the influence of socioeconomic cultural background on academic results in the Invalsi test of Italian and mathematics in two southern regions, Puglia and Abruzzo. And the presenter will be Sergio Di Sano, PhD in Development in Psychology. He is assistant professor in school psychology at the University of Chieti Pescara, Department of Neuroscience, Imagine, Imagining and Clinical Science, and a student, a student studies learning and adaptation process in the school environment with particular reference to reading skills and school climate collaborative with, with school improvement project based on participatory, participatory research, research action. And Caterina Valenzano, PhD in psychology, she is an assistant professor in general uh, sociology at the University of Paris, Department of Political Science, and studies in social protection and support policies program uh, intervention aimed to vulnerable minors and families. Uh, 
thank you, uh, Sergio and Katarina, for your presentation. Let's start. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Daniel, for the introduction. I'm Sergio Di Sano of the University of Chieti Pescara. I will present the work carried out in collaboration with Caterina Balenzano of the University of Bari. The contribution investigates the influence of a socioeconomic cultural background on academic results in the Invalsi Test of Italian and Mathematics in two southern regions, Puglia and Abruzzo. Uh, the presentation will be divided into five parts. I will present the frame of the interdisciplinary research which combines school psychology and sociology approach, and I will illustrate the aims of the paper, the method, the result, and therefore the conclusion. Um, among the central theme in school psychology, there is the defense of human rights with particular reference to United Nations Convention on the Right of the Child. And this document affirmed the importance of protecting the child from discrimination, of guaranteeing the free access to education, and to promote the development of the potential of all children. Uh, multi, multi uh, uh, sorry, um, multiculturalism, uh, uh, sorry, uh, okay, okay. Ecco, uh, yes, multi multiculturalism starts from the idea that we are all different in a wide range of aspects, such as age, gender, ethnicity, national origin, religion, sexual orientation, language, socioeconomic status, etc. Differences are in themselves an asset to be valued. Problem arise when a majority treat inappropriately and marginalize individual who, with respect to a given characteristic, constitute a minority. Another important aspect to consider is that of intersectionality, that is the belonging of individual to different social categories, which lead us to develop a complex and multidimensional identity. Uh, another central theme in school psychology is the commitment to social justice, which involves at least three aspects, rights, access and respect. The right aspect involves respecting the indication of the UN Convention of the Right of the Child. The access aspect involves guaranteeing all children access to society. Uh, society's resources and among theirs uh, to education and the respect aspect involves uh, promoting the participation of children and their active involvement. Um, about uh, the sociology, uh, the theme of inequality in education represents a key topic in sociological studies aimed at measuring the impact of the social class on school success. Scholars have tried to explain why students of lower classes have lower learning outcomes, even if education is free and available to all. A first line of research suggests that students with low socioeconomic status have a cognitive deficit linked to their cultural deprivation. In Bernstein, Bernstein hypothesis, the difference in academic success between students belonging to lower and upper social classes will be due to the two different linguistic codes, the elaborated code which is used in educational context and by wealthy classes and the restricted code used by the lower classes. Uh, according to theorists studying social and cultural reproduction, social class impacts school success, especially to language resources and cultural habit. The influence of family status on the scholastic career does not only depend on economic factor, but above all on the transmission of a cultural capital. These as well ethos and lifestyle, direct cultural practices, explain the intergroup differences in student academic performance performance and act as a mechanism of reproduction of social stratification. Uh, so the advantages of the context to which students belong are systematically transformed into greater educational success. However, the educational success of a student is also influenced by other factors which could reduce the way of the 
ESCS, Economic, Social and Cultural Status Index, literature highlighted the role of gender, nationality, regularity in schooling, class and school ESCS, and local context. Specifically, girls show greater competence in linguistic tests, unlike their male peer, who obtained better results in mathematical scientific tests. Immigrant students have difficulties to the linguistic and social integration aspect that inevitably hinder the performance. Being late in studies is a risk factor associated with poor basic skill as regard to composition, compositionality effect, the influence of a socioeconomic and cultural status should not be understood only in reference to individual student, but also to the average level of the class and school. Finally, research evidence greater variability between classes and between school in Southern Italy. This is the effect of segregation. Uh, this work uh, intends to investigate the influence of a socioeconomic cultural status, ECSS, ECSC, of a student or learning outcomes on, and how this influence varies based on the contribution of other variables. A, ser a series of a regression analysis were carried out. Performance in the Invalsi CBT, computer-based test of Italian and mathematics for grade eight in Puglia and Abruzzo regions were used as uh, criterion variables. The predictor are instead represented by the ESES of a student by gender, by the status of immigrant, by the delay in school in schooling, and by the ESES as the class at the class level. So the criterion variable is the result in CBT test in the Italian and mathematics that is expressed with the standardized score that have an average of 200, a standard deviation of 40. For the predictor variables, the gender, which can be male and female, the immigrant status that is Italian or immigrant, where immigrant means a student born abroad to foreign parent or born in Italy to parent, both immigrant from abroad. Uh, school delay, which refer to the age of the student at a given school moment, involves two possibilities, regular or early, that is same group, or late. Uh, the student, TSCS, which is built by integrating three variables, parental education level, parental professional, educational resource at home. The indicator is standardized with zero mean and standard deviation of one. The class CCS is the average is the average of the ESCS of the student of the class to which each student belongs. Uh, this study is based on secondary data kindly made available by Invalsi. Analysis are based on sample data that have been weighted. The student who participate in the Invalsi grade eight test for the year 2019 uh, numbered approximately 600,000. The student in the sample examine are about 31,000. The extraction of the sample took place with two stage method. In the first, the school were extracted, and the second, the classes. Uh, we have chosen to analyze the sample data for their higher quality as they are collected in the presence of an external observer, observer who monitor the correctness of the administration procedure. Uh, a first analysis involves the average score on the Italian and mathematics test, comparing the student grouped into a quartile of ESCS. The test score are calculating using the Russian methodology, which is, as you know, to place the difficulty of the item and the ability on the, uh, to be measured on the same continuum. The score ex are expressed on a scale with the mean 200 and the standard deviation equal to 40. As can be seen, the average performance of a student in the first and fourth quartile of ESCS differ by approximately one standard deviation, both for the Italian and math test, and this applies to both regions. 
A second analysis compare the percentage of a student belonging to each of the four quartiles for the five level of proficiency in the test. Uh, consider that the skills, uh, skills, skill levels one and two represent unsatisfactory learning outcomes, while the level four and five represent good and very good result. For the Italian test, as can be seen, level one and two have an inverse trend compared to levels three and four in this for buff region. Consider, for example, level one. The majority of students with the level one in Italy, 5200 for Abruzzo, 59 for Puglia, fall into quart quartile one of the ESCS, while only about 10%, 11% for Abruzzo, 10 to, 10 to 8 percent for Puglia fall into the quartile four. This means that an unsatisfactory level of learning in Italy, in Italy mainly characterize students with a low ESCS. If we move to the, anal the analysis to students with a high level of competence, for example, level five, we see that only 8% of the students belong to the first quartile in the SES, while 40 to 50% of them, 41 for Abruzzo, 46 for Puglia, belong to the fourth quartile of the SES. This means that the achievement of the highest level of the competence in the Italian test is a prerogative of students with high ECS. As for the math test, the results are largely similar, largely similar to that seen for the math for the Italian test. In this sense, the diversity in terms of learning opportunities for students with high ECS. ECS compared to that with the low EC, uh, ESCS appear as strong both for mathematics and for Italian, and this applies to both regions. A third analysis involves the application of a series of regression analysis model. For the analysis, we use the SPSS statistical software, the enter method in multiple regression. The first model involves only one predictor, student level ECS, ESCS, uh, we name ESCSS. In the second model, we added the variable gender, male, female. In, this, in the third model, we had added the immigrant status variable, Italian Im immigrant, to the previous variables. In the fourth model, we added the variable late schooling, regular late, to the previous variables. In the fifth model, we added the class ESCS variable to the above variables. Uh, for the Italian test, the linear regression model shows a relevant effect of ECSS, ESCS, both for Abruzzo B equal to 12.6 and for Puglia B equal 13.7. Uh, the inclusion of gender and immigrant status variation does not absorb the influence of ESCS in both regions. The inclusion of a late education variable reduces the influence of ESCS in Abruzzo, but not in Puglia. The, fourth in, the further insertion of the ESCS uh, at the class level variable reduces the influence of ESCS in both regions, but more in Puglia. So all the variables are relevant, but only late schooling and ESCS at the class level are able to absorb. So in some way in, um, connected to the influence of the SCS at the student level. So the idea for the politic is important to understand what is behind the effect of ESCS. Uh, um, for the mathematical test, the linear regression model shows a relevant effect of this ESCS both for Abruzzo B equal to 13.4 and for Puglia B equal 12.6. 
the inclusion of gender and immigrant status variation does not absorb the influence of the SES in both region. The inclusion of late education variable reduces the influence of ESCS in Abruzzo, but not in Puglia, and the addition of uh, the ESCS uh, at class level variable further reduces the influence of ESCS in both regions. Uh, so our conclusion are uh, first one, uh, first analysis, the conclusion is that the invalsi score in the SES quartiles show large differences, one standard deviation between the first and the fourth quartile in all group, both in Abruzzo and in Puglia. Uh, the, the second analysis, the conclusion is the analysis of the distribution of ESCS quartile according to skill level, level of competence, shows that the, the distribution is completely reversed if we compare level one and two from one side with the level uh, four and five on the other side. And this applies to both Italian and mathematical CBT test score. For um, the third analysis, uh, the regression analysis so, uh, our, for the Italian test, our conclusions concern the importance of working in Abruzzo on the problem of late schooling and in Puglia on the segregation and composition of classes. And for the math, our conclusion for the regression analysis concerns the importance of working in Abruzzo on the problem of late schooling and in Puglia on the segregation and composition of classes. Thank you for the attention. Thank you, Sergio, for your presentation. Yes, we have the same, the same uh, procedure. We have time for two questions up to now. If someone will have a question or comment, please. No, not for now. Can I, can I make some, some question in, in any case? Yes. Um, I, I, I have a comment, yes, for... Okay. Um, about, about the methods in the first step, about the, the methodological strategy in, in, in which you decide to include the socioeconomic individual variable and after that the socioeconomic composition of the of the class yeah, and the socioeconomic competition, I, I assuming is based in the same variable, no? It's just an average of the specific class for each student, for each student. That is the way in which you include the, the, the socioeconomic composition. Mm? Sorry. This, the SES, CSC, when you include that, the, that variable is based in the, the individual measure, but as an average of the, of the school or class in which students participate. That is the way? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because the SES at the student level is just what the invalsi data give yeah. you, while the SES at the class level is the average for the class. So any okay. student uh, is dependent not only on the, your ECS, but also on the SES of the class where you stay. This is okay. The, yeah, yeah, it's a comment about because in a, in a multi-level approach, uh, the, that, that variable have a little bit problem because it's very correlated with the individual variable because it's based in the same measure. And it's in, in OLS, o, 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 OLS approach, it's not possible to separate this uh, covariation. And in a multi-level approach, it's possible to do if you're doing some kind of centering. Uh, of individual and uh, school level variable. That, that is just as a comment in order to, maybe, maybe the effect will be similar, but uh, it's, a, it's a more proper uh, estimation when you include uh, variables uh, uh, about the group, in this case about the school or about the class. That, that is a methodological uh, comment. And, and the second comment is about the, the use of SES, because in your, in your uh, contextual uh, comments, use information from sociology, based in Bernstein, about the code, about the different difference. And in SES, you have uh, the books at home and other variables, other typical uh, socioeconomic status 
uh, uh, typically income or educational level, variables that are very correlated, but the books at home is correlated, but less. Typically, and there, there is some works from uh, Evans and Kelly, K Evans, Kelly and Secola, in which they discuss which is the relation of uh, books at home with outcomes, with performance in different countries. In, in, in that papers, there are three papers by now, they discuss this variable, the books, books at home, is another kind of variable. It's not exactly a stratification variable or traditional stratification variable. They say uh, this variable is more orientation of the family to scholarly culture, uh, and it's more related with the idea of uh, Basel Bernstein, the idea of codes that develop in the, in the families, inside the families, and these books represent the intention of the family toward the education of the students. Because of that, maybe maybe you can check that kind of literature in order to discuss and, and try to interpret this, this kind of uh, results or, or think about the, the model. Yeah. That's our, my question. Any other people have a question or comment? No? Sergio, you have an... an, an yeah, just, kind of... just to say, there is also Caterina Balenzano, I don't know, because she's more background in sociology and more in assessment and psychology, so I don't know if but she mm -hmm. said that some problem with the microphone, but you can solve, I think she can say something more about the stratification. I agree that in sociology there are more complex uh, indicators that we can find, so the idea was just to start with a very simple analysis that can be useful also for the school, just yeah, to start to, start to think about what does mean ESCS, how many, so uh, many, uh, would it depend in different ideas, different region, at least region, there are, uh, ESCS has different meanings, so because there are yeah. some other variables, so can be absorbed the effect of ESCS, so I, I, yeah, I think it would be interesting your input uh, in the sociological, I think, uh, uh, um, direction uh, and also the multi-level. I agree that it will be possible to do more multi, more uh, complicated analysis. So we, I think it was interesting to integrate my psychological and uh, uh, sociological yeah. background of Katrina Balenzono was so much interesting. After that, I think something more sophisticated than in the statistical uh, could be, I think, uh, one possibility in the future. So the idea was just to start to think about uh, what does mean ESCS and what does it mean also for the political in different regions, we can give some suggestion of what to find more effective uh, politics. Okay. Thank you, Sergio, for your presentation. Thank you. Okay. Now we will have the next presentation, the fourth presentation of this session. The title of the presentation is The Root of Education Inequality in, in Italy Machine Learning Approach to Analyze Geographical Differences in the Role of the Student Social Background by Maurice Triventi and Bruno, uh, and Maurice Triventi and Paolo Brunori. Maurice is Associate Professor of the Department of Sociology and Social Research at the University of Trento. His research interests include social inequality, education, crime, and public policy evaluation. And Paolo Brunori is Assistant Professor in the Macroeconomic and teaches in the, in the Cesare Alfieri School of Political Science at the University of Florence. He taught from 2011 to 2017 in the Department of Economic and Economics and Finance in the University of Bari. Thank you, Paolo and Maurice, please. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction and for all of you for being here. We have just slightly revised the title, but the substance of the presentation is the same. So it's Mapping Educational Inequality in Italy, a Machine Learning Approach to Analyze Geographical Differences in Inequalities of Educational Opportunities. And uh, what I'm going to present is a preliminary analysis that we did with Paolo uh, as part of a broader project that I, international project that I coordinate, which is called Inequality Trees. The background of this work uh, lies in the consideration that uh, there is an increasing relevance of individual competencies and skills in contemporary society beyond the attainment of formal educational qualifications. So individual competencies in key subjects are uh, particularly important for school and university success, uh, but also for the transition to the labor market professional career and also in general uh, a full participation in uh, the society. 
given this importance of uh, competencies and skills, it's important to guarantee equal opportunities to learn and develop uh, um, these skills, especially from the uh, early uh, childhood, uh, so in developing children potential. Uh, if instead contemporary society, as we know, are characterized by the existence of uh, inequalities in educational opportunities, this is a challenge, and uh, in particular, it challenges uh, both equity, efficiency uh, in the functioning of educational systems in terms of equity and efficiency. Uh, it's also important to consider that the context in which pupils are grown, uh, where they attend school, can matter for the opportunities to learn and develop their skills. So against this background, our focus in this uh, presentation is on the concept of inequality of educational opportunity. Uh, we uh, build on uh, the definition elaborated by Romer in a broader set and uh, uh, basically put it into, into the educational uh, context. And we define inequality of educational opportunity uh, as the degree by which educational outcomes are affected by circumstances on which the individuals feel no responsibility. So usually these are descriptive characteristics such as social origin, ethnic background, and gender. And here as a target outcome, we focus on individual competencies as measured by uh, standardized tests. So the contribution of this work is uh, the attempt to provide new descriptive evidence by merging the approach elaborated in two distinct research streams. On one side, we have studies on inequality of educational opportunities that are interested in understanding the role of uh, individual circumstances uh, on educational outcomes. On the other side, we have another bunch of literature that focuses on the geographical dimension of inequality and show the variation across contexts, across regions, for instance, in the achievement level of students. We have uh, already many studies in these two uh, streams. We know from these studies that the social background, ethnic origin are strongly associated with children competencies in key subjects. And this differential starts quite early in life. And we also know on the Italian case that there is a quite high heterogeneity in a student's test score across Italian regions, especially looking at uh, upper secondary education, so PISA results, but also uh, in, Balsi, uh, in Balsi results. However, after having scrutinized the literature, we found very little research on the extent whether inequality of educational opportunities are homogeneous or systematically vary, varies across Italian regions or provinces. So we try to build this, uh, let's say, a bridge between these two um, uh, stream of research. Our research questions are the following. So first, what is the level of inequality of educational opportunity and to what uh, extent does it vary across Italian provinces? Is there a trade-off between uh, the achievement level of the, the province level and uh, inequality of educational opportunity. And we ask which are the most important drivers of inequality of educational opportunity and whether the most important drivers are systematically the same across Italy or instead they uh, change according to the context. To answer these research questions, we take advantage of uh, the Invalsi SNV data um, we rely on the population data of uh, fifth grade students, which corresponds to the last year of primary education. Uh, we pulled data from 2012 to 2017 uh, for this analysis at the moment. Uh, the total sample size is very large, it's more than 3 million uh, cases, but for the sake of the analysis that we present here, we restricted the analytical sample to 2,000 cases by province. Uh, for a total sample size of 200, uh, for 230,000 cases. I will uh, explain why we did this uh, in uh, some minutes. Our outcome variable is a standardized test score in mathematics and language of the Invalsi test corrected for cheating. And just for the sake of presentation and uh, simplicity, we just uh, take the average of these two scores uh, for the paper we are also analyzing uh, both separately. 
And uh, the crucial independent variables that we analyze are those referring to the ascriptive characteristics that previous studies highlight as particularly important in the Italian case to affect uh, educational outcomes. And these are father and mother's educational level, father and mother's occupation, and these are measured as with the categories that are already provided by Invalsi, citizenship that distinguishes between a native first and second generation and gender. So in terms of one of the contribution of our work is the novel application of uh, um, machine learning techniques to inspect uh, the topic of inequality of educational opportunity. Um, in particular, we apply conditional inference regression tree which are basically a recursive partitioning predictive technique that segments our sample into different groups characterized by distinct levels of performance. And these groups are defined and as various combination of the um, variables that we identified as circumstances. Given that these model have potential some issues, we expand on them by relying on random forests, which basically are a collection of regression trees that allow us to predict individual outcomes as the average of the various predictions across uh, multiple uh, trees. I will show you some example afterwards. I will not enter into the de technical detail. If you have some questions, you can ask afterwards. Uh, I want to focus on why we apply these techniques and which are the advantages. The first one is uh, an advantage of flexibility. Applying these techniques allow us to um, basically look at potential context specific generating process of inequalities. We are not constraining our model to have just one fixed data generating process that is constant across all the territories. Okay, so this guarantees us a degree of flexibility. On the other side, by some specific adjustment that are uh, at the core of the machine learning techniques, like for instance, out of sample predictions, we are also safe in terms of uh, trying to preserve from the risk of overfitting our models. The second advantage is that these techniques allow us to take all complex interaction between variables. We are not specifying a simple model with additive effects of these variables. We are able inductively to take into consideration possible uh, intersection in the effects of this variable on performance of students. And the last point is that we have uh, at disposal different machine learning techniques. We chose these ones because uh, they also guarantee us a certain degree of uh, interpretability of results. We will present our findings with basically with graphs and maps. The crucial measure that uh, which we rely is the uh, inequality of opportunity measure is basically the proportion of the variance in the test course that is due to the individual circumstances that we consider in our model. So the higher is this proportion of the variance accounted for by this variable, and the higher is the level of inequality of opportunity. So it means that ascriptive characteristics are more predictive of student performance, student achievement, something that is not desirable. Uh, we chose this measure because it takes into account both the average outcome differences across groups and categories and their relative size in the population. And the use of the variance as a target measure to assess inequality of educational opportunity is also justified by previous uh, methodological studies in this area. So the first uh, uh, results are just around, just uh, related to the average performance of students that you find uh, in the map on the left across provinces. So province is the unit of analysis uh, of our interest. On the left, you find the average performance of students at the end of primary education across provinces. On the right side, you find the total variability. So within each province, how much, how, how much is the variance in the student performance? So what we observe? We observe that uh, there are some differences in the overall performance of students across Italian provinces with uh, slightly better performance in uh, northern provinces, but overall, actually, at this level of education, the end of primary education, the variability in the average performance is not so much. It's for sure 
smaller than the variability that we observe in uh, upper secondary education, on which most of the analysis uh, were focused. The second thing is that instead the variance within each province in students' performance, the variability, is more differentiated across provinces, and it is particularly marked in the southern provinces. Okay, when we relate these two quantities, we generate this scatter plot in, uh, in the middle of our slide, where we have the mean score, the average performance across provinces on the y size, on the y axis, and the total variability on the x axis. And what we find is that there is a negative relation between these two. So the provinces with the, with the higher variability are also those that on average have a lower performance, okay? We will come back to this uh, with another measure also. Now, this is an important graph for our uh, aims because it plots the geographical variation in inequality of educational opportunity. So it's the target measure of our interest. So what we observe, we observe that there is a, a variability across uh, provinces. So the provinces with darker color are those characterized by a stronger level of inequality of educational opportunity. And we found that this is more pronounced in several provinces uh, in the north. Now, if I click here, you should be able to look at uh, the in uh, interactive map. So we see that uh, in uh, the lighter, in the lighter provinces, like for instance, Caltanissetta, uh, Crotone, and some also Caserta, the proportion of the, of the variance in the performance that is accounted for by the ascriptive characteristic is uh, around 6%. If we go to the darker provinces, like for instance, uh, uh, Bergamo uh, or Piacenza in the north, this amounts to 19%. So it's more than double. So there is, uh, it seems that there are substantial differences in the extent of inequality of educational opportunities. In Italy. Now, continuing on our journey, what we can get from this uh, analysis is also some interesting insights on the generation of inequality of educational opportunity. So these are some exemplary trees, regression trees that are behind our estimations that allow us to understand a little bit to what extent across provinces, the data, the data generating process behind the inequality of educational opportunity is similar or different. And here we report just to the two examples in which, for instance, in Rieti 2017, we see that there is a quite simple structure that allows us to segment the population in distinct group characterized by different performance. Here, what matters is particular mother's educational level. And after that, uh, a father educational level. So the interaction between this variable is particularly focused on this. In Pordenone, instead, in the same year, you see that the structure of the, uh, the, 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 the process generating inequality is much more complex. And there is a more complex interaction between factors, okay, between mother education by uh, being born, uh, having not a city, Italian citizenship, and so on. Okay, I don't enter into the detail because we don't have time, but this is just to uh, have you to give you an idea of what is the potential of applying these uh, uh, techniques. Uh, one important thing now is that uh, potential problem is that the larger is the sample size and the more likely you are to find complex trees. Okay, so this is why we standardize the sample size across provinces in order to not incur in this problem. Okay, so the we, we basically solve this issue uh, thanks to the large sample size from which we can draw uh, samples from uh, of the same size. Now, we have provided an overall account of the level of inequality of opportunity across provinces, but inequality of opportunity is generated by several factors. Okay, we have examined six of them. And so a natural question that arises is, which are the most important drivers of inequality of opportunity. Okay, so now we plot the relative importance of the different factors, okay? The darker is the, uh, the color of a given province and the more important is that variable. Here we start 
with the father education on the left and mother education on the right. Okay. And what we see is that in general, Italy is very dark, especially on these variables. Okay, because just quickly you see what happens to the other variables, just to understand. So father and mother education are the two most important drivers for inequality of education opportunity at elementary school, at the end of elementary school at least. In most of the count, in most of the provinces, mother education is the leading factor. Okay. There are, of course, some, uh, some provinces in which also father education is important and is particularly the most important one. So if we click here, we see that, for instance, in uh, Bolzano, Trento, Vicenza, father education is the single most important driver for inequality of education opportunity. But also in the center, you find uh, in Vitea, Boroma, Rieti, and L'Aquila, it's the most important factor, and also in the north of Sardinia. So we observe also some intra-regional differences, which would be basically obscured if we just look at macro area, macro areas or regions. If we look at uh, occupational variables, so father occupation and mother occupation, we immediately see that the provinces look lighter in terms of color. This means that they matter but to a less extent compared to father and mother education. Okay, so this is quite, of course, there are some few provinces in which, for instance, mother occupation is the one of the most relevant factor. Okay, like this here, you see there is a, a Roma and a Pesa with Urbino and Vercelli, for instance, but these are more or less exceptions. In terms of citizenship and sex, sex is not so relevant in terms of uh, performance, in terms of inequality of educational opportunity compared to the other, okay? Compared to relatively to the other factors that we examined. And instead, the citizenship is particularly important in the Northern uh, provinces. This is reflected in part because here there are more migrant children, we know that, and in the South, but probably it's not fully for this, but we are investigating this aspect. Currently, so we come to the uh, to the important question: Is there a trade-off between achievement level and inequality of educational opportunity? When you try to answer this question in an international perspective, usually what you find is no, at least in the PISA data. Okay, here in Italy for primary education, it seems that the answer is instead yes. So what does it mean? It means that there is a positive correlation between uh, performance and inequality in this case. So what does it mean? It means that there is a tendency that those provinces that better perform in terms of average performance of children are unfortunately also those with higher inequality of opportunity. So it seems that they can guarantee a higher performance, but at the expenses to some extent of uh, in enlarging inequality of opportunities. We have just also analyzed some trends of inequality of opportunities, but I think we don't have time. But if you are interested, we can go uh, back to that with some uh, reasoning about that. So just the conclusions or the take home messages. So what we found is that inequality of educational opportunity in primary school varies substantially across Italian provinces and is especially high in the north. There is a high variability in inequality of educational opportunity across provinces than in the average performance, at least in the fifth grade. There is also evidence of intra-regional uh, variability across provinces that sometimes is obscured. Among the factors, mother's education is the most important driver across Italy, while citizenship is particularly important in the north. And uh, unfortunately, there is evidence of a trade-off between performance level and inequality of educational opportunity. So we have, of course, uh, several further steps that we would like to uh, develop this research, but uh, uh, I finished my time and I would like to thank you for the attention. Thank you, Maurice, for your presentation. Thank you, Paolo, for, for the work. And the same, yes. Question, comments? Just open the microphone. I have a question. Please, Giovanni. If I may, 
so thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Very, uh, very telling. Um, I have though two factors that are difficult for me to square in your, uh, in your results. And uh, they are the fact that inequality of educational opportunity is higher in the provinces with lower variability in the results of the students. So uh, that's uh, puzzled me a bit because I don't know if <clears throat> the fact that you can better predict uh, um, your, yes, this is this, uh, uh, this with, with the first uh, uh, map that you showed us. I think I, we didn't show this uh, anywhere. Yeah, no, before, the, the, yeah, the, the, this one, this double map, average score and uh, um, variability. So uh, I say that it's difficult for me to square because I don't know if they are kind of related. So if there is less variability, maybe some factors uh, have more, uh, are more predictive, but even if that's counterintuitive. But one thing that in my opinion, um, and I wanted your comment on this, and something that uh, instead I would, um, uh, uh, I think, I don't know if you can include it in your analysis, it is that there is an element missing <clears throat> That is the school level. So, uh, well, you 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 know uh, perfectly like like me that the reason for which the total variability in the south is higher is that the school effect is way 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 in more important in the south than in the, than in the north. So, intuitively, I would have said uh, more inequality of educational opportunity in the north than in, than in the south. But your results seem to me uh, counterintuitive and I wanted uh, you to, uh, if you can comment on- You, on you would expect a more inequality of opportunity in the south? Yeah, because of the, because of the higher se segregation, uh, both at the residential and at, uh, for uh, the higher relevance of school effects there. So, uh, well, th this is basically my, 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 my question marks on, on what you're doing. Okay. So the first uh, is uh, the relation between the inequality of educational opportunity and the total variability. So there is no mechanic, any mechanic relationship here. Um, basically, what we capture is uh, the between uh, groups uh, variance. So how much uh, uh, the total variability is accounted for by these groups. So it could, what is residual is the inter, so the within group variability. So that is perfectly compatible. So it would, it would mean that uh, in this, in the South, for instance, there is uh, more, let's say within group inequality than in the North. So this is one, one way to read uh, uh, um, the, the results. Uh, you can also check uh, the inequality of education opportunity in absolute sense and in the relative sense. Okay, here we, we use the relative sense, so it's even less sensible to the absolute variability. Okay, but of course we can uh, discuss. About the second, yes, this was exactly one thing that we were uh, exactly reasoning about. So how to include uh, the school to better understand uh, what's going on. As I anticipated at the beginning, these are very preliminary analysis and we wanted to establish, let's say some phenomena. And of course, we will not stop here and we will try to further investigate that. And this uh, of the segregation across schools is, uh, is important. And uh, from, let's say, from these results, it would seem that uh, it could be that uh, schools are more important factor in, uh, in the South than in the North, but it would seem that the segregation does not uh, run on these variables or does not run particularly on these variables or more than in the North. There is another consideration on this. We are, 
the our measure is a sum a summative measure of the contribution of several factors okay and uh, when we analyze this uh, you see immediately that uh, when you look at mother education for instance this is quite it's very important everywhere but here we have that in the north we have a citizenship really it's an additional factor contributing to inequalities much in a much important way than in the south okay so we should probably try to remove this to see whether we would find the overall pattern of inequality of educational opportunities on the basis of maybe socioeconomic background across uh, across the country maybe this imbalance would be uh, smaller than uh, the one that we find so here is a cumulative view on the many factors that could affect, uh, could affect. Yeah. thank you i don't okay. know if paolo wants to add something uh, yes i don't know if you have time but <clears throat> of course it's a, an interesting uh, idea to look at the uh, school effects uh, of course the sample size um, within uh, some pro in some provinces small especially if we don't merge all the waves so we end up with uh, 1000 uh, about 1000 observations so some degree of parsimony can can uh, can maybe consider but of course uh, i think it would be i i imagine that uh, <clears throat> the the school effect is going to be large if we include it thanks okay Thank you for your presentation. In, not, in, in honor to the time, we, we will have now the last presentation of the session. Uh, the presentation title is Wait or Harry, the effect of early school enrollment on the school outcome of Italian students, presented by Giovanni Adiati. Giovanni is current, currently holds a position as a researcher in sociology at the University of Milan, Department of Social and Political Science. His main research interests include social stratification theories and public policy evaluation. Please, Giovanni, share your presentation. Okay, thank you very much for your introduction. I share the screen. Okay, it should be working. Okay, so perfect. Uh, so, thank you very much. This is uh, a a uh, set of preliminary results from a wider project on early enrollment in Italy, which is a phenomenon that is incredibly widespread and also incredibly uh, under investigated in, in research. There, is, uh, there are only a bunch of work re relating to this, at least in Italy. One is authored by Maurice Triventi, who is here, and uh, uh, but there are really, really, really few uh, uh, a few works on this. So what is early enrollment? So in Italy and also in, in other countries uh, uh, in Europe, but most notably in Italy, there is the possibility for children to uh, anticipate the enrollment in, in primary school. And this can be done in two ways. Uh, the most common after the law that regulates the phenomenon in 2003, by request, the children who turn six by the uh, 30th of April of the reference school year, uh, can enroll to the first grade one year uh, in, in advance. Uh, the second, that was the old, uh, so to speak, the old way to do that, it was that the kids could enroll directly in the second grade uh, if they pass an ad hoc entry uh, examination provided by uh, by the school. Uh, and theoretically, there are, there's no age limit uh, for this. So you find in the data also pupils that take the, the invasi test uh, in, uh, of, of the second grade that are, uh, that are five, years old, uh, five years old, for instance. Um, this is a matter of debate, uh, a live debate um, uh, among educators and pediatricians, there are mainly two schools of thought. There are those that cheer on the flexibility of the school system 
to adjust to the students' needs and skills, but they warned that this possibility should be given under the control of the pediatrician, for instance, uh, while another school of thought uh, opposed this view by uh, pointing out that the loss of the time of free play uh, cannot, be, uh, cannot be repaired, that there is no time to rush to formal uh, education, and that uh, especially uh, children that are so younger than their peers in, in the class can uh, damage, so to speak, uh, or can uh, mold their, their interaction with their peers and uh, with their teachers, and they can have negative uh, feedbacks on, for instance, on their uh, behavior or on their competence that are due simply to their immaturity. Uh, again, surprisingly, there is few evidence on this. Let's point out that anticipation normally is related with lower test scores. And this generally goes hand in hand with the fact that the entry age in formal education as measured by the month of birth is somehow uh, is related with achievement and some author say that this may, may, may have long lasting consequences. Uh, this, uh, for, for instance, the, uh, this is built on the comparison, for instance, between those born in January and those born in, in December or in November. This, just to give you an idea of how the phenomenon is important in Italy, we have another map. Uh, we, we, saw, uh, uh, we saw a lot of maps in this, in, in this session. This is the percentage of early enrollees uh, in uh, uh, 2002 2011 cohorts as measured by Invalsi data among those born in January. So you see immediately that, as usual, Italy is cut in two. Uh, there is a part of Italy in which uh, a, virtually everybody having a son or a daughter, uh, more often the daughter, uh, um, born in January, they opt for the anticipation. Of the school year, that is, they enroll one year uh, in advance, and uh, the phenomenon is so widespread that it seems to acquire the status of a tacit social norm. That is, everybody do it. While in the north, you have more more choice to do that, and it's not uh, it's not so so widespread. This is. Uh, the difference in the percentage of students that decide uh, whose families opt for anticipation for um, for macro area north center and south that more or less capture most of the very the uh, regional and the provincial variability and so um, the interesting thing it is that uh, the close the, the, the closer we go to the 30th of April uh, the uh, the, the lower the, the proportion of parents that opt for that, but still in the South is a, a non-negligible minority, still, still in April. And uh, this geographical diffusion uh, is coupled with a strong social patterning. Here I create a um, typology of parental education uh, using, um, by distinguishing those that have two parents with university education from those that have only one parent with university education. Then the uh, other category is those that have at least one parent with a diploma, upper secondary diploma. And uh, finally, at the bottom of this uh, hierarchy, there are those whose parents have uh, no, no diploma. You see that within each region, within each province, within each area, this phenomenon is driven by uh, the, so to speak, educated elite within, uh, with, within an area. And this is uh, especially strong, uh, as, I said, uh, as we saw before, uh, in the South. If you are born from an educated family and you are born uh, between uh, January and February, it is, you virtually cannot escape early, early uh, enrollment, something that uh, it doesn't happen uh, in other uh, in other parts of, of the country. And um, happen. What are the drivers for the families to do that? 
how this um, how this norm have been produced in, in the South? Well, these are uh, uh, these are um, research questions that I'm trying to solve by uh, making qualitative interviews to to parents and school staff, uh, and to uh, by an, uh, by uh, collecting further data on on the phenomenon, trying to go back in time as much a, a, as uh, as I can. <clears throat> Other, uh, again, as I said, it's part of a wider project. Uh, today, I will concentrate on the effect on school outcomes, uh, while the effects on the labor market and uh, on the macro effects on the north-south competence gap uh, are, uh, will, not be, uh, will not be presented here uh, and, and are still under, uh, under construction, so to speak. Uh, so why? that early enrollment has an effect on school outcomes. Uh, uh, so part of the mechanisms uh, that could be responsible for this uh, uh, have been already illustrated uh, uh, at the beginning. Uh, for instance, uh, there is some literature in Anglo-Saxon countries uh, that deal with the month of birth, not with anticipation, uh, point out that often teachers uh, organize uh, uh, activities by, mm, by making uh, ability grouping within the classroom. And uh, especially uh, in, in the early grades, this inevitably posits uh, the early enrollees among the low performers. Um, then there is the a cumulative negative feedback that, this, uh, that the students may have all along the primary school. And then possibly also phenomena of bullying uh, er arising from, from, from older peers. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it, may, it, it might be argued that uh, the self-selection into early enrollment from gifted students could provide them with uh, higher stimuli by older peers. For instance, uh, if uh, one of the main driver is the um, uh, is the, uh, the fact that highly educated people, uh, maybe as a sign of status and not of competence, but enroll their kids into, uh, opt for their kids uh, for early uh, enrollment, many of them already know how to read right already in the kindergarten. So again, uh, if these kids uh, are good enough for, uh, to uh, to follow the classes of first grade, uh, older the con the contact with older peers might be beneficial. Um, so what I will do to look at the effect on school outcomes is to uh, pull invalsi data and creating a repeated cross section on the second and fifth graders uh, since the establishment of the invalsi. Uh, uh, of the Invasi uh, standardized tests. And uh, uh, just to provide the script, the one that I already showed you, this database is organized by Invasi assessment year. But to estimate the effects, and I will explain you why, I will use the same database, but organized by birth cohort. Um, I will try to build also another uh, database uh, to look at medium-term uh, medium uh, effect, that is, I use a database organized by birth cohort, and I will follow the 2003 uh, birth, uh, birth cohort along the grades 5, 8, and 10, thanks to the Invalsi, uh, to the Invalsi uh, longitudinal identifier. So how can I... Uh, understand whether uh, opting for early enrollment is beneficial or not. Uh, the is hardly uh, can be hardly modeled because the students enrolling in advance are different both from their classmates and also for the ones of their cohort that decide not to do it. I will exploit for that uh, the fact that there is a clear cutoff date that is uh, respected from the majority of families, that is the 30th uh, of April. And this is given by, by, by the law. 
my strategy uh, so far have been the one to compare anticipators, that is uh, the students born from January to April of year X, with the students born in May, that, so that were largely excluded from this possibility, that took the test one year later. So what I uh, will do is to have a quasi-fuzzy um, regression discontinuity design. I say quasi because I'm still uh, trying to get the day of birth, something that I do not have right now. Uh, I have a clear cutoff on the birth date and families have no control over it, only little control uh, um, at, at the margin, maybe, may, maybe, but this is a uh, preliminary analysis do not uh, support this. Uh, the fact that there is uh, um, uh, strategic, uh, uh, that there is strategic uh, uh, behavior on, on the part of, of the families for the month uh, of birth. Um, the, the most important thing is that students belong to the same cohort and that thanks to the Invalsi data since 2013-14 uh, on, I can control for school effects. So given that it's hard to model self-selection, what I will have is probably a conservative estimate of the phenomenon uh, because the positive, the positive selection, especially in Northern regions is difficult to, to capture. I have some downsides with this. Uh, uh, the main one is that different years mean different tests and that the students are exposed to different teachers. And we know that teachers matter a lot on, in, for, for school outcomes. So uh, now uh, uh, the results that I show you are still preliminary. I will not uh, show the fuzzy RDD or also because again, I'm trying to get to, to, to have an idea on uh, if it is possible to get the day of birth. But what I will do is to take a, the uh, birth cohort uh, database uh, I will drop those born in January to April that did not choose to anticipate. And I will drop the few anticipators from May to December. Uh, just to have an idea, sorry for the awful graph, but I hope that it's more telling than, than the slide. Uh, the red bars indicate the proportion of anticipator by month of birth of a given cohort. I will use a database that look like uh, the one that, uh, in structure, the one that you see in the left uh, right panel. Um, in the south, most importantly, uh, it looks like this. So the proportion, especially among highly educated parents of children that decide to anticipate is high. So we have a nice, uh, so we had less selection around the cutoff. Uh, I will use as variables here, uh, I'm uh, working on the, uh, on the attitudes because they change in the Invalsi, uh, uh, they change coding in Invalsi from year to year and then comparing tests from different years. So I will not show the, the, um, the results on attitudes such as victimization, but I will mainly show uh, results on the short term uh, math and language scores corrected for cheating because I exploit the full sample and standardize within each school year, not to incur in test effects. And I will use uh, uh, I will use as my main X the month of birth and controls for a heterogeneity. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, as controls, I will use all the possible variables that I have to. Uh, to model the self-selection into, uh, uh, into early enrollment. Uh, my estimation of strategy is pretty simple. I use linear fixed effect models clustering errors uh, at the school levels. I use three strategies. Uh, so first set of models uh, control for province and cohort uh, fixed effect. Uh, second uh, strategy relies on school and cohorts fixed effect. Um, and the third one, I uh, use uh, a twin fixed effect 
twins are retrieved via an one uh, to one matching within the same province and cohort for uh, students born in uh, uh, April and, and May. And then I add control variables. Uh, I prefer the first specification be uh, because um, it's more flexible and uh, it allows me to exploit the full variability of the sample also because uh, especially in the north, I have many empty cells in the sec uh, using the second specification. So uh, I will show the results not only for the two groups that I'm mostly interested in, that are this one, but also uh, uh, for the whole range of the month of birth of, uh, of my cohorts, because I'm interested also in uh, what happens observationally to students in December and, the, and, and in, in November and all, all the way down to, uh, again, to... The effect on April, uh, the, the effect for having anticipated for those born in April, which is the more robust uh, among the effects that I show, is, uh, can be conceived as the, as the sum of the differences between those born in April and those born in May, and those born in May, and uh, plus the difference between those born in May and those born in June. Because as you see, there is a clear advantage for those, uh, for those uh, that are born in the first uh, months of the year. And, and, this, uh, and the effect of the month of birth is pretty, uh, is pretty linear and, and negative. So we would expect those born in April had they not anticipated to, uh, to score better than, than those in May. So this is the effect of one month. Uh, also because the first time that I was presenting coefficient, I asked myself, uh, okay, maybe there are 0.2 uh, standard deviation of differences, but uh, compared to what should I, should I evaluate this effect? Well, one month, uh, is approximately 0 0.03, 0 0.04 standard deviations of, uh, of standardized test scores. Uh, again, interestingly, again, it is to notice what happens to the anticipators vis-a-vis -vis the younger kids in, in the class, in, in here, not, not in the classroom, but uh, in, in the schools or in, in the province. So these are the effects for uh, grades two and five. What we observe here is that there is a consistently negative effect of uh, anticipating. The more negative, the, uh, the, the closer that you go to, to the legislative uh, uh, threshold. Uh, and this is in grade two. Um, in grade five, differences shrink and also the salience of the month of birth on uh, on the, on, on, on the results gets less important. If we split around the most important variable that I found that explain uh, why, the people, uh, why the people decide to anticipate this uh, the, um, parental education, I see uh, uh, some interesting things. Well, as expected, the result is negative also for uh, highly educated families. Uh, uh, the disadvantage shrinks with the loss of disadvantage of those born later on the year in uh, grade five, uh, uh, as, you uh, uh, as you can see. But, and uh, obviously, as, uh, uh, as we know, uh, the parental education from grade two to grade five gets, uh, get, gets important. So uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is what happens by Parental uh, by parental education. It is also interesting to draw a line along the y-axis, and uh, uh, what happens uh, it is that anticipators, what they do, not only uh, in uh, achievement, they lose the relative advantage of being born in the first part of the year, which provides, as you see, a, a consistent advantage over the peers, at least in primary school, but also their uh, ability distribution overlaps 
with the one of groups that are uh, that that normally score much lower. For instance, the the those that do not have any uh, any tertiary degree in the uh, any tertiary degree in the in, in, in the family. So uh, all this, given that uh, the differences shrink quite uh, rapidly, so they, they tend to vanish as, as the relative age difference uh, uh, lose importance, uh, we might ask ourselves whether the uh, difficulties that the students faced uh, during primary school were worth the price of choosing to anticipate. Well, this is difficult to uh, this is difficult to answer. I uh, because there are uh, selection there are uh, selection phenomena uh, along uh, along the way to to to, gra to graduation. We see, for instance, that uh, I by merging different da databases, I, I I do not have here the precise variable about uh, grade repetition, but I do have the fact that the people don't show up in uh, uh, in the invasi data when they should. So uh, for grade eight, uh, given that it was part of the of the national test, I'm pretty. Uh, these results uh, results are pretty robust. They are less robust for uh, for grade ten because they uh, because um, the examination is not uh, compulsory. Uh, but uh, uh, but unless there is a difference between uh, two consecutive years in the uh, test taking uh, in the test take, taking grade, I I trust my my results. So what happens is that the the uh, risk of repeating a year almost doubles for uh, for grade eight, but it remains really uh, it remains low though, but it almost doubles. While for grade eight, it uh, it happens to be uh, considerably higher for for anticipators, and this holds true if you if you look at it also for uh, the kids of highly uh, uh, educated families. So why I insist on highly educated families, uh, and and you see that their grade of repetition in grade ten for highly educated families match the one of people with lower educational background. So anticipate, so um, I cannot, be, be, if I don't analyze uh, long-term outcomes like uh, long outcomes in the labor market, I cannot tell whether uh, uh, hiring up to secure advantages over the cohort peers is a good thing, a good strategy for families uh, in the long run, because uh, this seems th th this seems to, uh, to, uh, to to be the case to secure uh, to let their to, to 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 let the kids start with one year of uh, advance. If it is true that it is detrimental for achievement, but this uh, this uh, problem for achievement lasts only during the primary school years, that would be. A price worth paying, maybe. But if school failures get in the way, then the whole point of hiring up loses sense. And uh, what you do is giving is uh, exposing your kids to a higher risk of uh, school frustration, and uh, this might have repercussions uh, also later on, also la la later on in life. So these are uh, so far the preliminary results. There is not much difference between the South where this practice is so widespread and the North. Uh, I would expect it, uh, to, that to be the case, but apparently not. And uh, this was the end. By the moment I'm running out of time. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Giovanni. Yeah, we, we are on time now. We, we have to finish at uh, 14, um, just one small comment in any case, if someone has. Hi, Barbara. Um, an observation, uh, the phenomenon is having early. 
in the south children are sent to pre-primary school early because there yeah. is a lack of kindergarten in the south i think in calabria is 31 uh, percent in uh, the children yeah. of two years uh, are enrolled in primary school and um, there is two um, underlying reason in the south for family with a low social economic profile sending two years old baby to school often means having one protein meal a day for family with high socioeconomic profile where the woman often work send the two years old the children to school means the holy will to the mother to work and uh, i say that there is the lack of the kindergarten that um, uh, bring uh, to um, put the uh, pupils in uh, school primary and uh, one of the point of the recovery fund is uh, to increase the number of kindergartens in the south uh, and uh, this policy uh, could greatly reduce the number of uh, five years old in primary school in the south i think so, the problem is the kindergarten the lack of the kindergarten well yes thank you very much for the comment i I did not. Uh, um, I did not uh, illustrate all the results of this of this project. Yes, the the lack of kindergarten is a structural reason uh, that is uh, responsible for this. In fact, one should uh, observe not early enrollment in the primary school, but early enrollment in kindergarten because of the lack of pre-K. Uh, education. The question is, though, that uh, by qualitative interviews that I'm making, uh, the, the question is that this phenomenon was informally was informal and very widespread also three or four decades ago, when the problem of the mother's working was less stringent and the pre-K education itself was uh, was less relevant. So I completely I completely agree with you what I'm trying to do is to try to explore the genesis of uh, the possibly multifaceted uh, genesis of this phenomenon uh, because uh, the interesting thing is that now even people that do not uh, uh, that should be compared to uh, enroll the kid to uh, in kindergarten uh, early they do it because it's just what the people do right now. So what what, what I was interested in, it was this interplay between uh, a social norm and uh, and uh, and economic uh, and economic constraint. How this interplay might be uh, might be explained because it seemed a um, a a, a, re a really telling case of the building. Of a of a norm out of uh, uh, structural co uh, constraints, but uh, still I do not have the data to push this reasoning much further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni, for your answer and for the interesting presentation. Thank you, everyone, for participating in this session. Thank you, the speakers, for the interesting presentation, and thank you, everyone, for waiting up to now. And that's it. Yes, let's see you again. And yes. Yes, thank you. It's, the session is finished for now.